There we are as well. I've put this faulty STK I see yet. This and here's the one that's faulty. Um, I replaced some of the lettuce because some of those went bang. They bulge the tops and blew a little vent hole out the bottom. The side, um, yeah, it's these are are getting really hot. These ones are fine on this side. Uh, I replaced the fuses. I'm not getting 40 volts anymore. I'm only getting 22 volts out of these now. 22 volts DC. So this one here is probably on its way out too. Anyway, but this is what's inside these STK modules. Now you could make your own little circuit board and use modern components, modern surface mount components to remanufacture one of these things. Couldn't get it off with one piece, I tried, but it just blew to pieces. There's your two transistors, so left and right channel speaker for one, speakers A, left and right channel speaker for speakers B, whichever way, whichever way around it is. Looking carefully at this one, I can sort of see where it kind of arced. No magic smoke, but it's like there's an arc and it's burnt it. I get my little transistor test of it and we'll test that. So you got the base, I think. The bottom is the third pin. So this pin here, third pin there, is a, the collector, I mean, and the base and the emitter. So let's get a little transistor test of that and test these transistors. Okay, well, let's get to up with there. Anyway, it's uh, tested one way. I test it back this way, see what it says here. Yep, short circuit. They're both shorted. Short circuit. Dead. Okay, let's try the power train. Uh, VFTs, don't lose those screws. It should work in circuit. Let's see how it works on RGBTs. I think it does RGBTs, I'm not sure. Can't remember. This thing does. Let's see what it does. Test that one. Let's see what it says about RGBTs in circuit. Yeah, it doesn't know RGBTs, just says unknown or faulty. Yeah, definitely not designed not designed for RGBTs. Doesn't know it. So this doesn't do RGBTs. It's a special way you're gonna test those. It involves a wet finger, a headlight and a car battery. After uh, refreshing my mind, the exact process to test these, but that process works on IGBT bricks. I gotta take note not to lose the little plastic washers on these uh, tabs, because these are all isolated from each other and from the uh, and the heatsink. So there, I can see there's um, nothing else popped under here. So hopefully, change of those IGBTs. And that the resistor, which I've watered the whole wall off, of those uh, resistors, and we should be good to go. I've got to get some plastic coat spray, or I forget. I've got to buy some plastic coat to spray the circuit board again once I've fixed it. So I've got a whole wall of these resistors coming. 22 RI, which is 22 ohms. I can't really find these on eBay anymore. They don't send the sell them anymore on eBay. So I'm going to try and fix this one. It's actually quite a nice uh, quality unit for what it is, so it'd be a shame if it's not fixable. So it's inside one of these, uh, the, uh, as I said, you can reverse engineer this and make up your own one with a little tiny circuit board and modern SMD components. This would be a lot smaller, but you have like a, nine pins there and a tie in the board with little components on it. It'd be a lot smaller than this. You probably would get away with just the, um, having it the fully um, 
an ordinary circuit board but with a large uh, copper piece for a heatsink without this. But there's a lot of powder dissipates, so you probably need some sort of heat, separate heatsink to put on it. I can't, oh, camera's not going to pick it up before I carefully look at this. We have a short on this one, I can physically see it. There's like a bit of splattered copper in there between the um, leads on that die. So I've replaced this capacitor, it was fine, but I thought, well, it was 0.01 and something, 0.016 ohms. This one was 0.004 ohms, so well. I'd love it here, so let's put a fresh capacitor in it, it won't hurt. Main filters are all right. I'm going to uh, just pour these out, test them. Because it probably wouldn't hurt to recap this. It did work fine apart from that fault that it had. Anyway. Not a beak or so. And these are... Uh, had to order these components from Germany. The cheapest place I can get it from is from Germany. There's a, there's a website on Google that specializes in all these components, so there's no way I was going to pay like 100 or 200 bucks, but most of them come from America or Canada, but for some unknown reason, shipping from those places is bloody expensive, and they have a good range of components there too. Pisses me off. But anyway, this would be good once it's fixed, I can, uh, use it, especially on my car speakers. It's so 8 to 16 ohm on A and B together, or 4 to 16 ohm, A or B. So this will run 4 ohm speakers. Which I could use on my little uh, homemade ones, my Grundig speakers and the other little uh, uh, good speakers I got set up and made using car speakers. This would be a good amp for that. I might have used it instead of the Pi amp on my PC. It's got auxiliary input, and it's got a, another input I could use for, um, for example, I could not use a tuner and just use a Bluetooth receiver on it. It's got two tape monitors, I've got to work out how that works. You can dub it. I wonder how that works. So if I have one deck plugged into it, and then it's got this other record play function. I guess you could have it flip, just feeds it through straight onto another tape deck and just uses this to dub it. This will also go good with my little equalizer I've got too, so I could use this on my PC and my sad Sui amp will stay on my uh, iPhone and set up with the big speakers that I've got there. It's uh, definitely worthwhile fixing one of these. You did come across an amp like this and it's got faults like this, so that it's still worth fixing. Especially old Japanese gear. From the late 70s, early 80s, high oh, five gear is always worth fixing. It's better than today's garbage. Anyway, that'll be enough for now. Thanks for watching.